All right, what we're gonna do is go back, way back. Well, kind of. We'll start with Booksome and Mog. Together they had nine children, six girls followed by three boys. They named their youngest daughter Maggie. She married Frey. They had two sons and one daughter. I am the oldest of them. I'm Kendrick. The middle boy they named Herbie. Well, his name is Aubrey, but we'll get into that later. He married Deborah, and they had three girls. I am the oldest of them. I'm Tawana. The first girl and oldest of Booksome and Mog's children was named Blossom. She married a man named Eugene. Well, we call him Gene. And they had nine kids between them, seven boys, and two girls. The oldest girl was named Myra, and she married David, and they had three kids, two boys, and the oldest was a girl, and that's me, Simone. Of Blossom and Jean's kids, the tallest of the boys was Jerome. He married Juanita, and they had two sons, the oldest of which was actually the first grandchild that the two would share, and that's me, Will, but they called me Jean. So, y'all catch all that? Anyway. Hey, hey cousin. cousin! Y'all, welcome back for another week of Hey, Cousin. So, last week we um, kind of started the conversation about uh, delving into spiritualism and some of the things that we kind of find as we go through our everyday journey in life, right? And so uh, we left things off on our cousin Kendrick trying to discover what numerology meant for him, trying to get a deeper connection with astrological footprint and DNA in the world. So um, Kendrick got a little work done and we are going to start off with finding out what he found out. And then we're gonna just kind of deepen this conversation a little bit more, but we're gonna keep it light. We're gonna keep it fun. We're gonna talk about, uh, a little bit of tarot. We're gonna talk about one of our favorite shows that we're watching right now. So let's get into it. Cousin Kendrick. All right, box. what's going on? So I am a, uh, my life path number is number two. Basically the number two is like the person who was able to kind of like function within different, different paths. People kind of respect to look up to them. I'll definitely have some more updates on exactly, you know, I'm gonna actually have the, this report that you can have created so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and take a look at that and in our next discussion about that topic we can jump into it well make sure you go as deep as you can without having to pay for something because that's always my cutoff when they ask me my credit card information i'm like yeah. 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 I'm like, wait one minute yeah. Listen, <laughs> I, I spend i spend 15 minutes dialing in information and as soon as they get the la that last page talk about yeah. songs Oh, yes, it's going to be $39.99. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. no, I don't need it that bad. Yeah, <laughs> but that is awesome, man. I know um, when I first discovered my own numerology, I was a number four. And it just talked about um, fours being like leaders and communicators. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Oprah is a four. So my million's coming down the pipeline, y'all. And I'm ready oh, yeah. for it. Barack Obama's a two. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. that's it. If any one of our uh, cousins could be the president, I feel like Kendrick could be the president. Yeah. <laughs> like, definitely. <laughs> Kendrick for president. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's, so that, that's awesome. So next, let's move into, uh, let's move into tarot. So Tawana, do you have any info that you no. gather for us? Okay, so let me say this, y'all. That is this, it, all of this stuff started off as guilty pleasures. Just, oh, well, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. And I'm telling you, so there's this girl, I'm going to be straight up. I mean, the information is out there. Instagram, there's this girl called a hood healer. Um, I follow her. She's pretty cool. But for me, I need more of a balance. So I also follow this white lady named Mary, Mary Jo. And she has always been on point when it comes to more of the, I don't know, she really uses the cards, but she uses it for a spiritual journey. Like she's like, look, this might not be for you. Like she is, she used to be a television producer and I don't know how she ended up on my timeline, but, I, but out of everybody, 
she was the one that I felt most led to. And that's who I started watching, like literally laying in the bed, pulling out, writing, like get whatever I was fed from her for my spirit. The, t the cards basically turn it up. So just like Kendrick said, so I got really into it. Um, and I felt, I'm going to tell y'all, I felt kind of like, am I supposed to be doing this? Like, is this wrong? Like, uh, but all this information she's giving me is correlates directly with my life. I mean, like when somebody can say something head on about your life and they don't know you, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we have spiritual guides here and we just have to, the, it's the preacher for some people, for me right now in this moment. I have the preacher because I still listen to, I love Bishop Bronner, but I also feel like my spirit needs to be fed on a deeper level. So Mary Jane is kind of cool. I'm so embarrassed y'all. I'm the only one. It's only me and my kids that live here. And I, I hide my book. Uh, <laughs> uh -uh. What? What you scared <laughs> for? Here, put me in the turn, and I'm hiding my book. <laughs> <laughs> like at night, I'm like looking and reading. And I mean, the so here's the thing how could this be bad for you if it says tarot for beginners, a holistic guide to using the tarot for personal growth and self development? Listen, nobody. One of our parents would see that and they'd be like, tarot cards for beginner, a holistic guide to hell. <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to, the <laughs> to the devil. To the devil. You look like a So we just yeah. put her back up under there, but, but that's the truth. Like, I mean, they would be, so I guess that's the shame I carry because it's like, yeah. they don't really believe, you know, in kind of, being open, op as open-minded as I am. And from what I'm understanding, depending on who you're led to when it comes to this kind of stuff, like I don't think I would ever want to read cards, but I did the research, like Kendrick said, and I went back and I kind of followed the whole, um, the whole idea or philosophy around turning up cards. When we play spades, when you pass those cards out, you don't know what you got in your hand until you pick them up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's how you're able to do, unless you, unless firsthand bid itself, you wait till you get your cards in your hand and then you bid. So the whole art of turning up a card to see what that chance is, is kind of the idea around, you know, tarot readings or whatever. So whatever that card is and the cards, they don't represent, they represent adjectives like, um, they, they represent duality. So they represent all good. And some of them, the devil card is, is one of the cards. Um, the earth card is one of the cards, the world card, but all of them have different meanings. So if somebody shuffles up a card and then shows you what the card is, based on how good that person is, who can kind of, the conduit is the person that's reading the information to you. So if they're not spiritual, if they don't really know what they're doing, they're going to be off. But for mm -hmm. people that can draw or attract themselves to you, they'll be speaking directly to you and it's, it's, it'll naturally happen. You know what I'm saying? If, if that's what you want to do. But I mean, that's basically it for the, the cards mean different things. Um, let me read quickly to you guys. Um, because I think the education behind these things are are important. So we're going to fact check this. So one of the things I shared with my cousins this week was a little tarot tip. I'm a avid Pinterest pinner. So I'm always looking for things to kind of, you know, jerk my mind and kind of make me whatever. So whenever you're being read, the wands, the cups, the pinnacles, the swords, the major arcana, all of those basically have different meanings. For instance, the wands are yes, but you have to work for it. So it gives you an answer on, let's just say you're up for a job and you're trying to, you know, move to the next level. If you get a reading done or you happen to stumble across a reading that has wands in it, 
It's just basically saying, yes, you can have that, but you'll have to work at it. And you take that in whatever context that applies to your life. That's basically how I do it. The cups, yes, it'll come to you naturally. So some things um, I found myself being resistance with when it came to the mindset about money, as soon as I released it, it's like money just started coming. It's like you have mm. to uh, release some things and know that you cannot do it on your own by yourself. You have to just know that it's going to come and the things that you're going to, the things that you're doing to make it come to you is going to come to you. So if the cups are red, that's the kind of mindset I'm thinking of. And I can go through this whole list, but um, one of the things I wanted to say, those were two good ones, but if a sword is pulled is, is basically saying, absolutely not. No, you can't have that. Whatever it is that you're wanting at that time, if that card is pulled and you are getting a reading, it could mean that it's not coming at all, but just because a no is a no doesn't mean that it'll never come. You have to always have, be optimistic about things and you have to always too, this may not be for everybody. So that's the first mm -hmm. thing, because understanding that you have to have balance and not go too far to the left or to the right when it comes to these things. My curiosity led me to this. And for me, it has worked for me. I don't idolize it. I don't um, worship it. You know, yeah. I, I haven't even been on YouTube to watch any type of tarot in the last month because I've been working on a very important project. So it's not like I'm just like, just so enamored with it but I am curious about it and sometimes when I do watch a lot of the things that it, some of the people are saying actually is happening in my life so mm. I'm talking for about 50 minutes <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's funny I got a um I got a deck myself like I just randomly got up and uh I bought uh these these uh Osho Zen Tarot deck and I was just kind of drawn to it because I could have gone the traditional like tarot deck, um, but I went to a um, like just a little shop that this lady, she runs here in town, but she sells sage, she sells incense, she sells tarot decks, she sells all things spiritual, right? And she like, when you go in her energy is just like amazing energy. So I just chatted her up for a little bit and she was like, you know what, honestly, I would go for what you're drawn to there was this deck that um, I really love the illustration around it, right? And um, this is more of a progressive type deck. And so the cards, like, they look like this. Like, it's like, uh, almost like more of a fusion of the traditional way. And then someone got together and like added some, some new things in there, some uh, more descriptive illustrations of things. And then this book that I have that pairs with it kind of tells me uh, what each card means if I can't remember it offhand, right? And so it's got a mixture of the old and the new. And I just, I look at it just like Tawana was saying, I look at it sometimes if I'm needing like a little direction and I'm trying to help myself make a decision, but ultimately I know the decision is still on my shoulders because it's my life that I'm manifesting, that I'm creating. And um, sometimes I'll just like, even from a creative aspect, if I'm writing something, if I'm writing a song, if I'm trying to write a story or something like that, and I need to know what happens next, sometimes I'll look to the cards and just see, see what comes up. And when I tell you, it's so interesting, sometimes the things that come up, you know, and one of the things that you can do is the more and more you use your deck, you'll kind of build a relationship with your deck. So there is um, an intuitive nature that comes up every time you use it. So it's like, nobody could use your deck and get the same results, you know? But the second that you are using your deck and you are, like Tawana was saying, the conduit of everything that comes from it, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna manifest itself. It's gonna show you exactly what you're needing. And I've done some for like friends here and there, like, you know, just again, with the, with the, the precursor, like, y'all, I ain't Cleo, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> don't be, you know, there's none of your life choices off of what we're doing right now. This is all very fun. And this is how we're going to take it. But when I tell you things of merit and things of importance will come out of this deck, and I'm like, yo, I did that. Hold on. Where my little, like, trifold sign <laughs> and, you know, $35 a, a minute going to come in? Because I'm, I'm about to Thank go on the road. Holy, and let me, let me tell you something. The girl, the hood healer, she mm -hmm. said after she cleared her mind 
and figured out how to really make because she was flying she was flying all over doing readings for people and stuff like that and she predicted uh, that she didn't predict but she kind of read and said that trump was gonna win so a mm. lot of people was like ah she don't know what she's talking about y'all still on here but mm-hmm. lying. <laughs> you know there's lying b word y'all stupid you know <laughs> Like <laughs> she was like, I don't care what they said because guess what? I'm a millionaire now. She said, I turned on that fans only page and I let God direct me. And now mm-hmm. oh, for you to even sit down and talk with me, guess what? It's it's it, you gotta pay. That's so it. she is actually monetizing off of learning, you know, or taking her journey of spiritualism and 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 sharing it with other people. So it's true. It's yeah. really a gift. Like, and one of the things that you can do, I don't know if you do it to one of like, just like how we've um, talked, we started talking a little bit about crystals and things like that. You can also, just like you charge your crystals in the full moon, you can charge your deck in the full moon too. And mm. so that way you just are infusing that spiritual energy back into your, your plaything, really. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like your, your thing, your conduit. And um, so if I remember when there's a full moon or a new moon and I'm trying to like charge some of my, my crystals for creativity or whatever, I'll put them all in a little little bundle and then I'll put them out there and let them get whatever charge they're going to get, you know? Yep. And, um, it's, it's, I, I enjoy it. I, I love yeah, it. Yeah, I love doing it too because it's like when you start to see internally the things that you're working on on the inside and guess what? Well, let me finish this thought. When you start to work on things internally through working on your spirit, man, look, working on your chakra, making sure nothing's blocked, you know, and you start practicing, oh, I'm going to take this, this, this particular rock, let's just say a rock or gemstone. And I'm going to believe that whatever negative energy is in here got to go and they're going to be gone Mm -hmm. by tomorrow. And Mm -hmm. you actually believe it. Even if you think of it as a mind hack, or a way to think of, okay, I can really manifest whatever I want. And if I got to use some rocks and I got to use some cards to make things manifest the way I need them, because not only is it curiosity, but it's also practice that makes it real. You know what I'm saying? It makes right. the things come to you. Like if this rock says, okay, this is what this means. And you trying to get love. And you don't think that that rock is going to bring that to you, it ain't going to bring it to you. But if you really believe that the energy that is in that gemstone has the power to bring love to you, cleanse your heart, make you think of optimistic ways instead of pessimistic, like if you really believe that that is going to happen, it happens. And so I think of it as the practice of it because you have have something tangible to kind of compare what's happening internally this is the the external way of trying to you know what i'm saying speak what's happening internally i think that's that's what it means for me Mm -hmm. i don't know if that was kind of off but i was trying to i was just trying to say yeah i was was trying to say it's it's like because i feel like i'm over explaining for people who be like really crazy they uh -uh, mm -hmm." (laughs) (laughs) everything starts in the mind whatever belief or, or idea that they're holding in their hands or and it works because you believe this is a symbol that I believe in something outside of myself or from inside of myself that's external. And it's one of those things to me, it feels like uh, almost like the, which came first, the chicken or the egg? It's like, yeah, you have right, this physical right. manifestation of what it is that you're saying you're wanting, but you are also making a mental decision of what it is that you're wanting. If you're saying, I'm going to find love and all your thoughts position themselves to finding love, you're going to find love. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, uh, and I think that's why sometimes it's, it's awesome to kind of keep things light when it comes to your spiritual walk. Like you don't have to be so deep because some people will get so caught up on like, oh, like she putting it into a rock, you know what I'm saying? And trying get rid of the negative energy but right. it's like no like you are telling yourself i am releasing my negative energy but you also this thing that allows you to feel like there's a physical aspect to it just like kendrick was saying like right. and i think as long as you don't take none of it so so seriously because i will say y'all i do have a pet peeve of some of these people 
that's deeper than deep than deep than deep. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> like that goes for everywhere. That goes for inside the right. Pentecostal church. That goes for the spiritual realm. Like, hello, like, like, oh, 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 the energy, the energy. And I mean, I get it. I get that some people's walk might be real, real strong, but that's going to turn me <laughs> off. I don't care where it's coming from. You know what I'm saying? Like, your energy. Bye. You know what I'm saying? Don't whoop, <laughs> and you can't be whooping that out. Hey, you can't be whooping that out everywhere you go now. You, you got to <laughs> I was to get cut out. Like, you, 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 you. That's the where the balance and the groundedness comes in with this whole, Absolutely. this whole conversation. Don't be right. just yes. with people who don't have no idea. You know? I mean, for for the most part, again, like we talked about before, is one of those things that if you walk and move in a certain way, there are certain people that are going to be um, curious and attracted to that and be like, okay, what you doing? And those are people I think. You have your better chance of having those conversations with versus like, hey man, I got some rocks in my pocket. They're magic. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, uh, this month is crazy. Next <laughs> 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 like, so you're not getting invited to no parties. <laughs> so that's funny. I think it's always best to just kind of move how you move and let people who want to come to you let them come to you. <laughs> Otherwise, you might be. The cat, the crazy cat lady. Uh, Whip that thing out. <laughs> we got some cars you bust out like, yo. Yeah. We're trying to get a reading out here in these streets. Like, uh, <laughs> Don't do that. That's funny you say that because that reminds me of, um, I, I cannot remember the actual name of them, but you know the people that be like in the purple suits and they be outside like. The black yelling. Israelites. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. That's that, you know, they be going hard. They be going they be hard. They be so aggressive. And it's like, yes. <laughs> y'all, please. All right? Just oh, calm down just a little bit. Come on with all that now. I mean, Relax. Relax. Can definitely respect the passion, but at the same time, again, how you live, just like your kids. Your kids, you say a lot of stuff to your kids, but they're watching how you move and judging from that. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to really... You know, scream certain things from the mountaintop if you live in a certain way. That was a good That's smooth true. over Kendrick because them black Israelites was about to be on in our inbox, <laughs> flaming us up. Yeah, so, hey. yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, do your thing. I respect how y'all move. I'm let y'all do y'all. <laughs> yeah. But we gonna do us how we do us. I think, um, Moni, did you have anything to say? You you said you kind of like a beginner too with the tarot. Did you have yeah. any input, insight? I mean I've actually, because, because I mean, of course, the first thing that I knew about tarot reading was Miss Cleo called me now for your <laughs> you know, right, that's, exactly. that's all I knew. And then um, as I got older, I heard people talking about it. I knew it was a part of the spiritual journey. However, I didn't delve into it very, like a whole lot. I only had like one reading and the one reading that I did have, it was pretty accurate. I will say that, but um. I didn't go any further into it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't go as far mm -hmm. as like, okay, let me purchase my own cards. Let me purchase a book about tower reading, which I really should have, you know, and actually listening to you guys, it's like, yeah, I, that's another uh, area I need to go ahead and educate myself in. Next time you come up, let me know. Like and then we'll take you to the, I'll take you to that store that I went to. She's, okay. she's really, really cool. Yeah. And then there's another one right beside there that's owned by um by two black women, a, a mother and a daughter, and it's a uh, craft curio conjure, and they're they're awesome. Like you can get like a spiritual candle made, like all types of stuff. You just go and you, you know, and they're they're there to help you too. Yeah, that's another thing I was um about to say. You know, like they actually do have candles. Like it's like a whole lot of like rituals and stuff like that that people really do and of course people will think of it as being satanic but i mean if that's what you know you got to do what works for you and you know a, a little bit of that a little bit of christianity you know a little bit of you know what happens on like you know what actually works for you you know what i'm saying so that's yeah, right, that, right. that's really all it boils down to because some some things that work for me may not work for you and it, you know that's true you know it just whatever works you know so that's all I wanted to say about that. And to piggyback off of what you're saying too, um, just as a gentle reminder to everyone out there listening, 
I know that we're encouraging everybody to be out there with an open mind, but also there is still that intuitive nature that you still want to make sure you're listening to. Because there are people who will market themselves as light workers and really be out here in the shadows doing God knows what, like really be for real, for real witches. You know what I'm saying? Like, and right. if you go in and your spirit or your your aura doesn't receive or doesn't feel light and positivity from it, that might not be your place. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's about finding someone that can, you can resonate with. You know what I'm saying? Like even though a lot for a lot of the listeners out there, like all this stuff is gonna be very very new. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta know voice is the voice that you've been conditioned to listen to as far as any of this stuff goes. You know, like even getting your horoscope read and which voice is literally your intuition. Like, nah, this person's going to put a roof on your whole life. So <laughs> get out the door now. <laughs> yeah. And let me, the biggest thing you got to understand, these are all different tools to help you in your path. So it's like to warn it, and I think everyone's kind of said, you know, you don't really need any of this at all. You can kind of define your own path, but, you know, as you go along to kind of like, you know, help you in your journey just to get some different perspectives of different things, you know, these are good tools to actually tap into if that's something you're interested in. And I want to say this too, just to kind of wrap it all up as you guys are saying, it's going to happen organically. If yeah. you, if, 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 it, if you are ready to receive the information, then it's going to be something that happens. You ain't going to have to go out here and force nothing. It's because something's going to come on TV that you're watching. Something's going to come across your path and stop you and say, hey, what's up? You know, so that's that's really what we want to say. So um, we don't have to defend who we are. You know what I'm saying? Because we, 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 know, we know who we are and we know what's going on. And we're not trying to lead anybody down no, no voodoo demonic path. Mm -mm. We don't play them games. Um, yes, but anyway, want to take it to Junie said something about what came first, the chicken or the egg? Hmm. So that statement was actually one of the statements in American Gods. That's one of the move the, the series we all have been watching. Mm -hmm. And this is a great segue, I think, because American Gods is basically, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let y'all kind of provide y'all perspective. On, um, you actually put me onto it. So um, I'm not even much of a TV watcher, to tell you the truth. But Tamar was like, yo, check out this, um, this show. So I checked it out. And what's interesting to me about it is the simple fact that it's very relatable to the world as it is right now. So for those who those of you who haven't seen the show itself, it's basically about the old gods versus the new gods. Basically, kind of like religion versus technology is, is a way to kind of look at it. And it gets really deep, but they use a whole lot of symbolism from different eras of uh, different types of folklore and, and uh, different gods from different cultures. And they kind of like all blend into this very interesting, um, wild story. Yeah, one of the things that I got from it was, um, was like, just even even from the title, breaking down the title, you have Grecian gods, you have African deities, you have Roman gods, you have all of these different cultures that reside outside of America that have been mainstays in their in their history, you know, if, if I'm not mistaken, is one of the newest countries, you know what I'm saying? Like, so because we were, we as the America that we know, because we all know that they came and stole some other people that wasn't theirs to begin with, but that's a whole nother podcast for a whole nother day. But as mm -hmm. far as the America that we know it, that broke away from British rule to create what we have here, it was devout of culture because literally it was meant in its idealism to be a melting pot of different cultures, right? And so with the title American Gods, it's like what things are important to us? And it's like technology. It's like uh, all of the things that we are trying to be at the forefront of, the things that we're trying to push forward with. And um, it had me thinking along the same lines as uh, how in, in over in the UK, they still have, uh, they still have 
kings and queens and and actual mm-hmm. royalty there. But here in America, our quote unquote royalty is our celebrities. You know, like the same way that they follow the queen, we're following the Beyonces, we're following the Oprahs, we're following the 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 more favorable presidents, the Baracks. You know, what I'm saying like people that are of importance here for us. So that was the coolest thing about like how it basically it's a, a, a spin on things that we deem important and the things that we've now threaded within our culture as Americans and how it relates to those old ideals, which there are some people who have come over that came over still worshiping some of the quote unquote old gods. And the whole show kind of follows how people come over one, but then over time, and their lives get more assimilated into this new way of thinking. So the old gods are starting to die out. So this show is literally a fictional representation of that. Like the people who used to, uh, you know, make sacrifices to home and hearth to make sure that their crops were favorable for the next season back over in, uh, I don't know, maybe in, in Ireland. They're not doing that over here. You know, there's they're trying to find out now, okay, how can I Google the best way to turn my crops for next year? Like, so things have changed and this show shows the, the friction and the dynamic between that old and that new. And then there's a whole black element that I know Tawana, I, I, I feel like, I feel your energy that you about to, you about to show us about it. You about to tell us all about it. So <laughs> no, I'm not, them. I'm being, I'm going to be, I'm going to be respectful because one of our, um, um, co-host hasn't really seen it, so I ain't gonna let loose just yet. <laughs> I wonder which co-host it is. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> no, I will say, I will say, I will say that I have seen a clip of where I cannot remember the guy's name, but uh, Orlando Bloom. Yes, I saw that clip. And that was the only clip uh, that I saw from, from the ship. So I, I I don't know if they were on the slave ship on the way to America or what was going on, but he was basically breaking shit down and just basically <laughs> telling you like this is what's happening. This was about to go on. Because they bought their god. So so in that scene, they it literally showed the imagery of those slaves bringing their god with them. They prayed, they God showed up, and they showed out. I mean, it kind of yeah. was like a sacrifice or whatever, but they rather sacrifice that way than come over here and get their foot cut off and be calling somebody massive for 400 years. You uh, know what I'm saying? And, it, and the show really, for me, um, the deities, the Black deity, the woman, the, first of all, hands down to the actors, Orlando Bloom is playing that part I think that's Orlando Brown. Orlando Bloom, Brown. that white man that Oh, not that Bloom, not Bloom, not <laughs> Brown. Orlando Brown. Orlando uh, Brown. Katy Perry, baby daddy, actually. <laughs> Loud and wrong. Sorry, y'all. No, but I know his first name was Orlando, and all I got to say is he played his part. The woman that plays Oshan, she is a beautiful, dark-skinned sister that is playing that part. Um, Mr. Wednesday, uh, 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 that man, I don't know his name. I'm gonna find out for the next time we talk about this, but the actors are really bringing to life the whole idea of, okay, y'all, this is, this is real. We really just putting images to what's really happening. Um, and the, the, the fact that the media has basically took control of people's minds, um, they bring that to light and how, you know, the consciousness of people, we, we don't understand how interconnected we are. I don't, I don't think we are, we do. Because think about it. When COVID hit, where everybody been at when COVID hit? At home, since, since it hit home. In mm-hmm. front of their TVs. Oh, oh yeah. <gasps> oh yeah. True. They was downloading fear by the busload. Mm-hmm. That's true. But, I mean, and to uh, me, American gods, technology, the media, all we have to do is spin it. Mm-hmm. All these things are correlated. That's why you got to know who you are. 
and you can't let stuff like that's why everything always goes back to the spirit because with the bible you got to be careful what go in into your eyes mm -hmm. into your ears and into your mouth so just lay it yeah. <laughs> no that's true <laughs> Can't put your mouth on everything. Yeah, man. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful what you download, though. That's that's just my whole point. And American gods, they make a big, big to me. The biggest imagery I see is I idolism. Like because mm -hmm. we idolize the religious god and the devil, they exist. It, because we, even though they do exist, it's heightened at a different type of level because if every if if masses and masses of people believe in buddha guess what when they pray buddha exists, buddha exists and guess mm -hmm. what when they pray they believe that buddha is the one answering their prayer you know i mean it's just mm -hmm. it's, it's really that simple so that's to me what that's what i want to say i don't want to go too deep 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 into it i know season four is going to probably be coming out very soon so you got time um miss Moni. But um, I think Ooh. American Gods is <laughs> <laughs> American Gods is definitely um, a, a show that if you are on that path of just you know inquisitive in trying you know trying to figure things out and just want something really good to watch, it's a really great story. You wanted to educate us a little bit on um, on crystals. So I'm gonna share my screen. I don't know if you guys had an opportunity to look. I just sent it this morning, but um, hold on, let me share my screen. So, oh Lord, here we go, y'all. Oh, oh, Auntie. TT <laughs> <laughs> Wanna. These glasses real. Okay, hold uh -uh. on. Hold on. Let's these ain't no fake. Okay, here it goes. Okay, can y'all see it? Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are so, like Pinterest. That's that's my thing. Um, when you read the description of some of these rocks or stones, whatever you're going through in your life, basically when you bring these types of energy into your life, it either amplifies, it takes away. There are crystals out there that remove negative energy. Like people don't understand that when you let people come into your home, you don't know what their thoughts are. You don't know what they just did. You don't know. You don't know. So I right. have a habit of um, there's a black, hold on, let me see if I can make it, make it, make it big like that um, hematite. Like y'all know, I'm be saying the words wrong. They're going to be like, she don't even know how to say the gemstones, y'all. <laughs> so, um, this hematite, that's what I call it. If you're trying to manifest and you're looking to be more grounded, this is a stone that you should probably, you know, purchase, consider purchasing. And they're really inexpensive. Um, Apache Tears, that's one of the ones I have. Uh, healing, grief, grounding, protection. Protection is important to me. It's one of my affirmations every morning. Like Moni said, say your affirmations every morning. And one of them I say is I'm always protected. I'm always safe. And I always say that for my family members and friends as well. They are always protected. They are always safe, you know, and the stones kind of reinforce that energy when I'm praying that or when I affirm that. Um, the lapis lazuli, I hope I said that right. Vision, truth, awareness. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for me, when you start to enter into the next level, you ever heard that saying new level, new devil? Mm -hmm. When you go yeah. to the next level in your life, you're always going to encounter people that you don't know. So whoever they show up as, you have to believe them until you're aware of the truth of who they are, you know? So for me, I would carry this when I'm first meeting someone so that I know who I'm dealing with and it can give me that inkling to trust my intuition. But these, this is this is basically um, one of the ones that I found. If you go on Pinterest, there's tons and tons of different boards out there that has everything about these gemstones. Pinterest is really an informative, um, huge online vision board. Anything you need to find, you can kind of search and find information about because people have created specific boards about that niche or about whatever you're searching for. I would definitely suggest a lot of people uh, check out what their name means because i mean just that little bit of information knowing that anytime someone speaks your name mm -hmm. this underlying meaning of it could be very impactful there's a um i i believe the show or the documentary might have been called freakonomics um for a while it, it was on netflix 
I could be wrong about the, the name of the show, but I believe it was called Freakonomics, right? And so it told the story about, like, it was stories about names. And there was a woman and her name was, her mom named her Temptress. And it just followed Temptress's life. And it was a terrible life. Like, she was in and out of jail. Like, she had, you know, had a lot of terrible things go on in, within her life. Like, I believe she, you know, had gotten a uh, book for, like, prostitution at one point. Like, it was just things that you wouldn't want for your child. And so with that, it just goes to reiterate the importance of naming your children. You know what I'm saying? Like, anybody out there who got a kid on the way, like, what you name that kid might literally color what their life looks like and not for nothing there is a spiritual aspect of that and then there's a very real aspect of it like if you get a, a, a resume on your desk and the name is temptress johnson it's like trash you know what i'm saying like i'm not <laughs> i'm not about to go out on a limb for temptress johnson because i feel like i already know who you are even if i'm not actively thinking anything about it i'm i'm turned off automatically and so because that's why it yeah it's like the so word temptress has this you know this meaning attached to it yeah so yeah that's i thought that was interesting to kind of really i don't know what made me do it but just besides okay what, what, what does your name mean and each time someone speaks that name they are basically labeling you based on what your name really means so yes well, that goes back to history when in the Bible days, they used to choose names that had meaning. Samuel, David, right. Obadiah, Nehemiah, Jacob. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Habakkuk>. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I, yeah, so names are definitely important. That was some great insight. Um, I just looked at what Tawana meant, and I don't know if this has any relevance, but um, it means able and robust. And I just learned that in that moment when you said, have y'all ever looked at what your names mean? I've done the numerology, right. but I never did what Tawana, what does Tawana mean? And it's a Persian, kind of like a Persian name or whatever. But for so long, I was, I was never ashamed of Tawana because that's who I am. I'm never ashamed of who I am. But I kind of put her in a box. Like when I moved to Atlanta, I had to drop to Wanda because it was hard for me to get a job. Like, right. it was like this little black girl coming up in here. They knew me. I go now. What I did do was go on Facebook. It's one to one I know is a real estate lady in Arizona. But other than that, it's like black girls, I mean, white girls are not named to Wanda. So right. it automatically singles me out. But with yeah. Nicole, which is also my name. I was able to at least get an interview. I mean, dang, give me a chance. So that's how I felt. I felt like, wait a minute, what is the problem? I had, I'm all qualified for some of these jobs. What's going on? Yeah. And, you know, so for me, never ashamed of my name, but always kind of use my middle name in professional settings um, because I was judged coming in. So, mm -hmm. And that's the piece of what. I guess we were kind of getting to the topics of, you know, building our own family wealth and stuff. So your yeah. name is like, okay, well, I named you. So of course you're employed under our, our leadership and, and our family structure versus having to try to assimilate to someone else's. To someone else's, yeah. Because you're always going to be at a disadvantage. Yeah. And, and there's always, you know, as, a, as a, a dad of a newborn, like we had a whole long list of possible names and things that we wanted to discuss my wife and I as to what we were going to name our sons and there's always that pull as a black person living in America it's like well I don't want to reject you know my blackness by choosing this name that's more traditionally Anglo-Saxon but I also don't want to set my kid up for failure in the event that they need to seek things from the world that I can't necessarily give them you know and uh one of my friends like uh one because we named our son uh Luca and I don't know very many black Lucas but I know that Luca fit because it, it means light you know and um bringer of light rather and so I was like yeah this is a beautiful name I love it like it just had a ring to it we we really enjoyed that and one of my friends was like 
I mean, why you ain't name him a black name? And I'm like, hold on, let me stop you there. Because <laughs> because my son is a black man and is going to be a black man. He's a black boy now, but will be a black man. Any name he got is a black man. You know right. what I'm saying? So I think it's time for us to stop separating the the blackness from the name and know that we can do it all. You know, like we can name the kid Antoine. We can name the kid, you know, Nicole. We can name the kid, you know, Harrison, if we want to, you know what I'm saying? But that should have no bearing on the blackness that that kid can still have access to and, and own. And I think a lot of the time it does start from within. Like if we look at each other with a little bit more grace, like, yo, that name kind of white, but you know, I'm not going to take any of your kids blackness or any of your blackness away from you or them because of the name that you have, you know, but I, I thought that was uh, uh, an interesting piece to add yeah, to the, still the wear black every day. Yeah. Okay. Your <laughs> and I purposely right. named my kids Chase and Chad purposely because I knew the struggles I had and as a parent what you're supposed to do is try to protect your kids from those struggles that right, you yeah. know. I had a class with two brothers, Chase and Chad. They was white. But I like their names. I just like the names. And I ended up having two sons. So that's what I named my kids. So, you know, I could give two flips. I didn't say the other F word. Man, <laughs> <don't> <laughs> <flips>. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think we as black people, we have to kind of understand, you know. We gotta survive in this world. Like we, yeah. we have to, you know, move and shake and kind of, you know, do the back head bumps and kind of walk straight and yes, ma'am, no ma'am. Like we, it's, it's, this is not a straight road for us. It is right. a yes. very crooked bunch of rules, dirt rules with curves. Okay. And, mm-hmm. so thing, and, and that's what this whole awakening process I think for the individual kind of helps the black family because now you, you're you kind of dealing from a place from being an industrialist you're you're, mm-hmm. you're building something so you can name your kid what you want you want to name your damn kid Pookie you can name him Pookie yeah. <laughs> you, own, you own the damn the store and all the city exactly. work, then you're good so exactly. control is what we need to be worried about I think more so than anything else so we shouldn't have to change who we are uh, how we, you know, address ourselves, how we name our children, anything, but we have to have control, financial, um, mental, all that good stuff, all that kind of control to be able to live the kind of lives that we want for ourselves and our kids without, you know, having to, you know, pander to someone else's ideas of how we should, you know, conduct ourselves. That's true, but guess what, Kendrick? Here's where we go into the ghetto shit, okay? Mm. That black people do. Black people go to American Deli and eat up the chicken and eat up the bone and throw the bone right on the ground where you got to get out and go right to. (laughs) Black people take trash and throw trash on the ground like you're not going to ever go to to the gas station ever again. And they do this in their neighborhoods. Right. Hold on, let me finish now. Let me finish because we uh-huh. need to have this conversation. Black people killing each other and scared to kill a cop. And I'm not telling nobody to go kill no cop, but mm. we quick to kill ourselves and our brothers and our uncles. And because we get mad and we got a gun. You know how uh-huh. much people we don't you understand know how many people in our community. It's like no matter what we unity is one of it's like the energy of dissension and the energy of division is embedded so hard within our community. It's going to, it's going to really take some chanting and some prayers and some deities to come over here and help us with this because that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a generation that is basically um, the, the, the residue of slavery is on us so bad. Mm-hmm. It's like we don't even recognize opportunities to come together as one. We can't even sing one. It's no one sound. It's one band. It's none of that going on in our community. I mean, in, in certain areas it is, but in the mass amount that we need it to see the effective change that's needed, it's not happening. But yeah. you know what? To, 
Oh, go ahead, Kendrick. I mean, just real quick. I mean, I agree with what you're saying. I think the thing at this point is um, you're not going to value the community, anything outside of yourself, until you value yourself. And right. for the most part, you're being under the influence of someone else's definition of who you are. Mm -hmm. And until we kind of address ourselves, oh, wait a minute. What happened? You good, Kendrick? Hold on a second. Oh, it's phone. Somebody was calling you. Okay, cool. I mean, but before we address the individual, like the conversations we have now about, you know, seeking spirituality, connecting with yourself, when it comes down to a whole group awakening, that shit's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Kendrick, right. Kendrick, you don't have to yeah. have no spirituality, no trash in a trash can. But, but, but you, thing, you, have you have to understand value. You have to understand value. You, you, you got to understand, understand value. Respect. Yeah. Because what it is, is there's little to no value placed on the places that we live by the powers that be. We, at one point, like there's so there's such systemic roots in, in ingrained in why our communities are the way they are. We literally, when segregation happened, towns had our own thing. And then once we were free and could do whatever we wanted to do, then we had thriving communities. In Charlotte in particular, there was a, a Black Wall Street right. down here where they had doctors, they had lawyers, they had all types of, we were governing ourselves and the powers that be saw, oh wait, no, they're doing a little too too well for what we intended for them. So let's go in and, and hooks back in them and that's exactly what they did they started uh, as far as redlining goes they would not allow us to own any more property than we already quote unquote owned so with that like they had these renters that were renting out properties in these black communities or um sorry not renters but landlords that were renting out uh places in these black communities and what would happen was they would either raise the rent or they would say, I'm not renting to no more black people no more. So then locations would get vacated. So then in our black, once thriving black communities, you had boarded up houses because nobody yep. was living there because nobody could live there because nobody could buy that property legally by, by you know, uh, the, the law standpoint. And then so what they did is they waited until it got so low and so down and so down. And they said, you know what, everybody out, we like uptown now. We like the downtown scene as the white people with wealth. And we are now going to go back and reclaim our things. So what they've done is they have systematically created environments for us to see no value in to the very point to where now, even if you are trying to sell your home and you're trying to get an appraisal, don't y'all know that there is a, a phenomenon where appraisers will go and place a lower value on a black home because they see black people in the pictures inside the house than they would if there was Johnny and, and Sally and Mary Beth in the pictures on them walls. Like it's real stuff, like to where it's calculatable to where there was a family that got an appraiser to come in because they were house and it was super low ball yeah and it was super low ball but they knew their value and so what they did is they had a white friend come in and get another appraisal and i want to say it jumped kendrick was it like a hundred thousand dollars yeah it was like substantial i think it was about a hundred thousand crazy and that's just all oh, about what you look like you know what i'm saying so it's like yeah if, but, if everybody's telling me that my neighborhood's trash i'm gonna treat it like trash but I, I also understand your point. Ridiculous. Because in and, 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 and Junie, everything you said was facts, definitely facts. However, I'm not even gonna say trash can. Let's take it to the Emmys when Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion all on, on stage humping on each other like they at the strip club on national TV. Well, you mean you mean Cardi and and, and, and Megan? Whoever. Grandma. <laughs> it's like, oh, like Grandma, Grandma Grace. Grandma. <laughs> Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> when Nick and my God. And... Yeah. Sorry, Nikki. So Sorry, ready. Nikki, because you was not up there doing that. That was Cardi B and Megan the Stallion using their popularity. But but I mean, look I'm at sorry. what's her name? What's her name? Miley Cyrus do the same thing. So it's like if we're gonna create a standard, we shouldn't have to. I, we shouldn't have to hold ourselves to a standard that they don't have to hold themselves to. I feel like 
black people are not allowed to have emotions. We're not allowed to mess things up. We gotta be perfect all the time within our own eyes and within their eyes to where like you have a, 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 a white boy strung out on crystal meth, ruin their life, you know what I'm saying? But, oh, they need help. Like they just have an addiction. But you have a black kid that, you know, smoke a little crack here and there and they're a crackhead. <laughs> Don't nobody want them. Don't nobody do that's, nothing. You know what I'm saying? You and it's like, Listen, I think know? I I think I think my I think our points are sim uh, it, it's not it's not as parallel as I'm trying to all I'm trying to say is the small things in our community that we can work on the little just the little things that don't even take no thought. See, something but that's the thing. As something as small as throwing trash in a trash can at the gas station. What kind of, but, do we have to rally up to do that for people to get No, that? the thing is the mindset. That's what it is. It's I'm all done. in the mind. If you are taught so many years from the time that you are born that you ain't nothing, where you live at ain't nothing, you ain't going to be nothing, why would you care about anything? You don't care about the community around you. You don't care about uplifting the people around you because nobody else did and nobody else taught you how to. So there's no way for them to be like, oh, well, let me not trash my community because this is not what I want people to see our community as. This is not what I want to see when I walk out. This is what I know. That's all they know. Like people just, man, I see all the cool kids on the street and stuff like that. I see the prostitutes on the street. Nobody cares. There's nothing nice here. So why should I care about anything here anyways? But it's, again, it's all about the mentality. If nobody taught them, that they are worth something, if nobody taught them that the area is worth anything. Like, there's people on my age level now that know nothing about real estate. They don't know anything about valuing themselves. They don't know anything about loving themselves. That's why I go to preach about, hey, you guys need to say your affirmations. Guys, when you wake up in the morning, make sure you speak nicely to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you speak positively to yourself before you give anybody else in the world a, a chance to tear you down and stuff like that because the minute people wake up their thoughts are like oh i ain't nothing i'm in this house that i ain't nothing i'm not even in my own house like i ain't not, I, I i will never amount to anything like i'm just here i'm just living they don't value themselves that's the thing it's not so much about them not caring about what they're doing they don't care about just throwing trash on the ground and stuff like that you at the gas station you just trash and stuff nope it's not it's not that they don't care it's they don't know they don't I know to value these things I and here's, and here's another morning. But here's uh, another piece to that. Here's, a, here's another piece of that one. Junie, because... Junie, let me tell Moni this. Okay. I report their ass every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Moni. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Miss Beasley looking through the blinds like, they don't do another so chicken bone. They're throwing trash on the ground. But but Tawana, let me let me let me oh, hook you again that. to this this other it's the it's another systemic piece. I did something called the Civic Leadership Academy where I was able to find out about the city and how it works, right? In in my own personal city. But let me ask you, when was the last time that the city came and emptied those trashes, those public trashes? So if you see a trash that's overflowing and there's no place for you to put your new trash, where are you gonna start putting it? So if, if, if they are coming on a cycle that is way more lax than it would be in the white neighborhood, in that white neighborhood, they come in every week getting the trash out of there. And, and I will say to, to that same point, I live in a transitioning neighborhood right now, right? It's a lot of us, but our property values are going boop, 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 boop because of our proximity to the city. When I first moved here, I tried to recycle, right? week after week after week, they would not take my recycling, right? I just started putting in the trash. I was like, well, it is what it is. I didn't yep. know that there was a power already in place that I could call and report those things. And because nobody comes into our communities, nobody tells us the power that we have, that, that, that gas station that hasn't had their trash picked up in a month and a half, somebody could call and be like, hey, Sanitation, y'all need to come and y'all need to get on the schedule. Y'all didn't come last week. Y'all need to come this week. I'm going to keep calling until y'all on a consistent basis. The thing is, communities, there are people who know that. And so they are putting those things into practice. But in our communities, don't nobody tell us because they don't want us to know. And so See, but it's that's, always going to perpetuate itself. But that's it's going to perpetuate itself because at what point do we as a community be like, okay, well, 
there's some rules to this game, so I need to take it upon myself. There's no nobody's gonna call you and just give you some information if it's out there. You gotta mm -hmm. everyone has a supercomputer in their pocket right now. So that whole, you know, mindset of okay, but they haven't told us, they ain't gonna they gonna never tell you. You in competition with them. Right. This, this, this is a race for a reason. Mm -hmm. So I think at this point, this is a technology age. You can you can find them TikTok, how to work TikTok and all kind of dumb shit. And you know, doing the thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> soon, as soon as stuff doesn't happen like you want it to happen, uh, oh, well, they didn't tell me. Well, shit, why, why would I tell my competition how to compete with me? Right. <laughs> so that's, that's that's you. Me to kind of take ownership. Everybody got to take, each individual has to take ownership in order for the community to kind of rise to a place where we can be competitive. Absolutely. Because then, these people are not coming to help you because they like you. It's like, okay, well, I guess mm -hmm. you know, we pay some of their money, so we got to give them some. But we're not going to give them full services because they're not going to take the time to find what the full services are and demand those. Mm -hmm. And you know we, have an innate, we have an innate, we have an innate, we have an innate ability to know when something is wrong. Like when you little, you ain't going by that, oh, that hot. You are not touching it because you're like, when you try to touch it, you're like, oh, that, that's hot. So you automatically teach yourself right there. I ain't touching that, that's hot. So we have an innate ability to do what's right. You know, and even though I keep bringing up the trash, in every aspect of our lives, we could choose. We could choose to throw the trash on the ground or put it in the trash can. We could Absolutely. choose to find out information that we need to find out to make ourselves better and make our community better. Absolutely. Or we could choose not to. And unfortunately, a lot of people within our communities choose not to. I saw a 62 years old lady at McDonald's throw a family dollar bag on her car. <laughs> I swear to God. But like y'all say, her mama, her grandmama, her churn, her grandchildren, they all probably throw trash on the ground. Exactly. Listen, <laughs> when, it, when it was time to go Somebody north to Harriet Tubman, they was probably throwing trash on the ground <laughs> on, the, on the Underground Railroad. Too. <laughs> That's all a right. pair of people, buddy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a team. <laughs> I was going to say, it's a cycle. So, like, if nobody breaks that generational curse, even though it might be yeah. something small as throwing trash out, because, see, I don't see my I don't see my mom throw trash out the window. I've never seen her do that. But I've seen one of my cousins do it. Now, I'm telling you, it's all about, like, what you, like, what you decide. Because, again, you do have a choice. You can just have been a cousin on your daddy's side. <laughs> uh, I said that must have been a cousin on your daddy's side. I definitely was. <laughs> definitely on my side. But no, like you, you do have a choice. It's like, well, I can go with what I saw my cousin do, or I can go with what I know my mom does. You know what I'm saying? It really, you again, you do have a choice. Um, That's true. At, at, that, at that moment, but um. Excuse me, if somebody doesn't say, hey, that's not what we're going to do, and if that person doesn't lead by example, that's just, they're just going to go by off, off, off what they feel like doing. So listen, right. let's do, let's, since we got this platform now, I feel like we have the opportunity to say what we, the small changes that we need to make in our community. So um, everybody, I guess we can, because of the sake of time, we can wrap this up. We'll talk about yeah. um, Sweetie and um, get her Bentley repo another time because I think that's <laughs> very. <laughs> that is, we got to talk about that, y'all. Oh, <laughs> hey, we, uh, hey, we can't let that one go, y'all. I but, ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but <laughs> as far as pet peeves, I want everybody to go around and say, "We I don't know. We we gonna call this segment, but we gonna come up with a say. We gonna come up with it. So this will be our platform." To, to tell you guys certain things you should do as far as etiquette, as far as building our community up one by one, relationships with each other, how you should be when it comes to certain instances. We gonna cover all that. So who wanna go first? Me, let me go first. <laughs> go ahead, one that I can, this is a pet peeve of mine and I will do this till the day I die. I don't care how old you are, I will correct you. If you misspell or mispronounce my name, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, I had to get on one. I had to get on one of my uncles about that the other day. He kept misspelling my name. 
I don't care what we talk about. That is not how you spell my name, sir. And I'm going to correct you because if I don't correct you, I'm giving you the opportunity to go and spell and say my name wrong around everybody else. And then everybody's going to be spelling and say my, no, 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 no. We was just having a conversation about names, right? And I mm-hmm. think to talk about my name because y'all want to talk about damn trash and shit. But <laughs> that, that is really a pe- do not misspell or mispronounce my name. And it's not even just me. I do that for other people too. I remember there was this guy in our church. He was so talented on the drums and his name is Deontay. Well, the pastor would content, the pastor will call him Dante and he got other members in the church calling him Dante. Um, pastor, that boy name is Deontay. Please get his name right. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like that. I really don't like that. So please, if somebody is telling you how to spell their name, please do not. Mis- I will curse your ass out. Do not misspell and mispronounce my name, please. Got it, Moni. Mentally noted. I'm going to send it. I'm going to send a memo to y'all. Hey, morning names fail, right? Please make sure I have <laughs> Listen. <laughs> and hard. And hard. It's and hard. That's, it's a respect. It's, I, think, I think it's more of a respect thing, too. Like, don't disrespect me like that now. Especially Listen. if it's something that bothers you. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm telling you, I had a cousin that misspelled, mispronounced my name. And I, oh no, she, I think she misspelled my name. And I'm like, listen, that's not how you spell my name. She's like, oh, whatever. I don't communicate with her because of that shit. I really don't like that. Yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. Who next? You. I go next. I go next. (laughs) I really don't like, okay. And this is on the relationship situation with, well, not relationship, but friendship business partnerships, when you are, um, for me, lunches, coffee dates, things like that, when you're building an opportunity or creating an opportunity, you will take the person out to eat or whatever the case may be. You show generous, hey, that's a sales thing. I'm a saleswoman. So one of the things I'll do is probably take you out to eat this, that, and other. Mm. What I have learned is, and I learned this from my daddy, Herbert Gibbs. My daddy used to like to take people out to eat after church. We go to Red Lobster. I'm not going to call this young man's name. We'll call him Mark. Mark orders a lobster out of the lobster tank. (laughs) No, Mark pointed at the lobster and was like that one. (laughs) Mark had a bib around his neck. Mark had a bib around his neck ready to eat lobster. God, <laughs> you say Moxie, you gonna run off? Come get lost. <laughs> My dad was buying dinner. Wow. Don't do that shit. That's yeah. savage. That's ghetto. That's inappropriate. <laughs> it's unpalatable. It makes absolutely no sense for you to buy something, make somebody else buy something that you couldn't even afford yourself or would <laughs> buy if you were to buy. When I tell you, my daddy. My daddy was like, y'all better not ever do nothing like that. Like, that's how we got our lessons. Like, um, they used to do stuff. He would be like, don't, that's not how you operate. Now, yeah. guess what? I ain't going to never take him out to eat no more ever <laughs> again because. <laughs> 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 and I know so many people who do that. So if you do, so the lesson I learned the most about that is don't tell him you're buying to the end. Mm, right. Yeah, you wait to the end for sure. Wait to the end. Let them order what they would normally order off their own little debit card. And right. then mm-hmm. at the end, then you ask <laughs> for the, for the That's right. mine. Mm. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I think my thing is this. The more I get, the older I get. <laughs> I'm just seeing this dude with this lobster bit more. <laughs> it's like. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <to> go down. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Anyway. Gibbs. Good God, good meat, good God, let's eat. Oh. <laughs> Man, probably never had a lot since then. Like, <laughs> so, it never will again. <laughs> that's how you get, that's how you get your blessing right there. <laughs> that is too funny. Oh, so my good. biggest thing is 
individual self accountability. And I think if we really focus on that, everything else kind of falls in place from that point. Because I mean, we've all been to certain levels of life and you want to kind of blame other people. But again, it's like you were saying earlier, Simone, that we all have choices. And especially right now when we're in like this global environment where you can see what's going on all over the world, there's contrast. A lot of times when we grew up in like in poor areas and 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 areas off the beaten path, you didn't have a contrast to see better. So you thought this mm-hmm. was the top notch. But at this point, I just don't really have a lot of sympathy for anybody because I, it's, it's hard work. It's not going to be easy, but you're going to suffer some type of discomfort going left or right. And now you have to decide which worth it to you. You know what I'm saying? So the moment you see like, okay, even with the racism thing, we grew up in the in the South, and I think I have experienced a lot of racism. However, mm-hmm. <laughs> at the same time, because of that, I made certain choices. Okay, well, I grew up in a super racist part of South Carolina. When I was able to move out of South Carolina, <laughs> I moved out of South Carolina to better my chances of making moves I needed to make. So, mm-hmm. of course, you want to step out of your comfort zone, but your your full success and happiness on the other side of your discomfort and mm-hmm. in order for you to want to achieve that you have to yourself be in tune with who you are as an individual and take full responsibility which kind of sucks sometimes but it's just necessary otherwise you're going to be a victim and i think in our community we kind of sold the whole victim thing so much that that's a part of your psyche mm-hmm. you know to the point now that you <laughs> You're doing like amazing things, and when things don't go quite as how you want it to go, it's like, okay, well, it's racism. Okay, well, first off, that's probably one of my pet peeves, like the use of the word racism versus prejudice. I don't think many people know the difference because one carries much more weight than the other. Mm-hmm. So, but that that's my that's my spiel. Um, take accountability for your own life. If you can help other people on, the, on that path, do that. But no one owes you anything that you're not willing to mm-hmm. create and work for yourself. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, I guess for mine to round it out and, um, you know, round us out is make sure that you're leading your life with reciprocity. If somebody do for you, you shouldn't have no problem doing for them. You know, like for one of the things that I started doing, because I I used to really enjoy inviting people over to, you know, my house or whatever, and like, just relax, have a good time, whatever, whatever. One of the things that I started doing with people is I know that I'll give you the shirt off my back. But at the end of the day, I don't know if somebody will give you off the phone, you know what I'm saying? So what I was doing was I'm like, you about to have stuff at my house, Um, you know, you could bring a bottle of something you like and then we all communally contribute. So you're not right. coming up off of me and not just coming up off of you. If I come I'm gonna bring the bottle of wine. I'm gonna bring, you know, something just a just, even if it's a five dollars of wine, y'all, that's not gonna get before the end of the night. And it's gonna be like, hey, they did something and t- to account they didn't just come and try to use me for what they could get out of me because there's too much of that going on. And I think we have to make sure that we're going through life treating people the way that we would want to in turn then be treated. So mm-hmm. reciprocity is literally how I lead my life. If somebody do for me, I'm thinking, how can I do for them one day or today or tomorrow, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Never go into a situation expecting to receive when you have no intention to give back. Absolutely. And that's that on that. And if you and and Mark, next time a broke ass home before you come trying to get lobster out the tank. Lord. <laughs> hey, I, I kind of got mixed feelings about that for the simple fact that a lot of time reciprocity doesn't come from the same person you give it to. You. So yeah, I mean you can feel some kind of way about certain things, but Look how your life kind of like benefits from that. You think he, he had he has lobster bib on getting that 
that that free that free lobster. But <laughs> <laughs> over time, the blessings and it might come. I'm sure Uncle Herbert got that money back ten times over from different sources because he he opened his heart out of love and you know respect for that situation. And you know sometimes <laughs> people gonna think they're getting over, but they they, they can't get over on you. You can't be right. taking advantage. Right. But but in that same breath, it means like don't be no fool. Like don't take Mark back out for a lobster again or back out again. You know what I'm sure. saying? Like you you can you can see where people are and you can meet them there. And one of the things my my takeaway <laughs> from that story, Wana, was Uncle Herbert ain't take Mark out for dinner. <laughs> Uncle Aubrey took Mark out for dinner. Man, Uncle listen. Aubrey got the money. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, Aubrey, Aubrey is poppy. Herbert is Listen. Herbert. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I mean, I mean, that's really, really true. But y'all, this is like this has been a great conversation. Um, thank y'all for tuning in. Hey cousins, y'all got anything else to say? We all mm-hmm. want to- that's it. I think this um, this conversation has really led us up to be really dope for our next conversation, and that is uh, generational wealth and creating it. So I how does that it. sound to everybody leading into our next chat? That sounds, sounds good. good. Sounds good. Hey, All right. We'll see y'all next time.